Ambulatory Devices there's a variety of safety methods that are available to the nurse that helps decrease the risk of injury. When we're talking about restraints, we have to understand that restraints have to be ordered every 24 hours if they are going to be used. There are no PRN or as needed restraint orders. We have to monitor the client's circulation and their skin integrity regularly. We also have to make sure that if a client is being restrained that we provide toileting, hydration, and nutrition because they're no longer able to do this themselves. Restraints must be tied so they can be released with one pull and they need to be tied outside the client's reach or it does not do any good to have a restraint tied. This is a variety of restraints available and it's certainly not all of the restraints. In the upper left hand we have the soft wrist restraint. In the upper middle is the papoose board. In the upper right, we have chemical restraints. In the middle, we have a vest restraint. We have a mitten in the right middle. In the lower left is another type of a chair restraint. And then you have your five-point leather restraints. When you look at the need for an assistive device, you have to look at individual risk factors. What is their lifestyle? Do they have any problems with mobility? Do they have problems with sensory or communication? Or do they just not understand the need for safety? Just because a client is in a facility does not mean that he or she is not at risk for injury. So assessments must be completed and situations must be monitored wherever the client may be. Assistive ambulatory devices can include devices such as canes, walkers, crutches, gait belts, mechanical devices, prosthetic limbs, etc. There are several different styles of canes out there. The standard crook cane, there's a tripod cane and a quad cane. When teaching a client to walk with a the cane, they put the, uh, put the cane on the client's strong side. So if their right leg is weak, you put the cane in the left hand and this will help mimic walking. There's also a variety of crutches available. Axillary is the most common and that's what we have pictures of here. The loft strand has a hand grip. There's a metal band that will actually fit around the client's forearm. So in other words, for some reason, they're not able to grasp the uh, crutch in the normal fashion. And then there's a platform style that has a horizontal trough where the client's forearm rests and there's a vertical hand handle for them to grip. <coughs> Excuse me. When teaching a client to use crutches, we encourage them to never place their body weight on the axilla because it can actually injure the axilla or the radial nerve. Rubber tips on canes, crutches, or walkers can help prevent slippage. When teaching a client to go upstairs, we teach them to go up with the good leg and follow with the crutches. When they're going down the stairs, we teach them to go down with the crutches and the bad leg and then the good leg. When we teach them to rise from a chair, they grasp the crutches, both crutches, in 
their hand on the side where the bad leg is and they use their other hand to push off the chair. Again, there's a variety of walkers available. Many of them have wheels on them. Some of them don't. Uh, some of the standard walkers that just have the t uh, plastic tips on the end for non-skid uh, may have tennis balls placed on them to help them slide a little bit easier. The stair usage will be the same as with the crutches. So when you're going up, you go up with the good leg and down with the bad. Getting up from the chair also is the same as with crutches. And you am teach the client to ambulate by pushing the walker forward and then walking into or swinging their body into the walker. But don't let them get the walker too far in front of them or they lose the stability of the walker and they should never tip the walker up uh, and then a lot of clients want to to put the the hind legs on the floor with the upper or the front legs in the air and then as they walk into it they put the front legs down this decreases the stability of the walker so they should pick it up as a unit and then move it forward There's also a variety of wheelchairs out there depending on the type of injury or the need for the wheelchair. Um, most of the wheelchairs in hospitals are pretty much the same. Make certain that you lock the wheels, both wheels, prior to the client getting into or out of the chair to make sure that the chair does not slide and they end up on the floor. The foot rests are often removable and this will facilitate the client getting into or out of the chair. And the foot rests are frequently adjustable to help position clients injured legs. So in other words you can elevate them. Gate belts should be used on every patient um, that has a risk for fall. Use them cautiously on clients that have had recent abdominal surgery. Make sure that you're not cinching that gate belt around uh, a surgical incision. And apply them cautiously around a female client's breast. This can be very tender or sore if you tighten it up in the wrong place. So gate belt is going to decrease the risk of client injury. And as with everything, we need to implement the nursing process. When we assess the client, we need to assess what their need is and which assistive device is required. Diagnosis is going to help determine what device, if any, would be the most appropriate for this client. Determine how much assistance is going to be required to accomplish the task. Does the client require education or training to appropriately use the device? Is a physical therapy consultation required prior to ambulating the client? Determine the client's capabilities and make sure that they do have appropriate training. When you implement your procedures, then make sure that you use non-slip shoes or socks to prevent falls even when assistive devices are being used. And then evaluation. Was ambulation successful? Did the client use the device appropriately? And as always, if you answered no to the evaluation questions, then you need to reevaluate and possibly change your plan or the goals or the interventions.